In the previous video titled Edit Narrations, we checked and edited our narrations, adjusted slide timings, and we ensured that all media assets have been set to playback automatically. And by media assets, I'm referring to any narrations and video recordings that we added and any other audio or video that we may have inserted into our presentation. With those steps behind us, we are now ready to export slash save this presentation to a video format. There are two ways to get to the export to video settings. The first is if you had the recording tab going, you could simply click on it and then go to export to video. But if you did not have that recording tab going, you could simply go to file, down to export, and then pick create video. Either way, you will get to exactly the same settings. In this interface, thankfully, we don't have too many settings to worry about. The first setting lets you control the quality and file size of your resulting video file. If I was to click on that, you will see that you have four different settings and starting at the top, you have Ultra HD 4K, which obviously will be your largest file size and ultra high quality. And then it works its way down to standard 480p. Now these sizes are simply measurements in pixels. For example, 852 is the pixel value from left to right and 480 is the pixel value top to bottom. And it might interest you to note that a majority of PowerPoints actually start at around this size, which is 1280 pixels across, 720 pixels top down, or a measurement that is fairly close to this measurement. So if you, for example, were to pick HD 720p, which is what I generally tend to pick, you would end up exporting your PowerPoint to a video file that would pretty much match your original PowerPoint. So if for whatever reason you were to pick a higher resolution, you would, in my opinion, be upscaling the PowerPoint to a larger video file, and that may not necessarily be a good thing. Considering that we are targeting students who will have to rely on bandwidth, which is sometimes mobile bandwidth, we need to be considerate about the file size, and in my opinion, HD 720p is the perfect balance between video quality and file size. And if your presentation is more textual, as in it does not have that many visual elements to it, standard 480p would be a great option as well. So what you could do is simply explore some of these size settings and have a look at and have a look at the resulting video file so you can gauge the quality of your output and also take into consideration the file size. So for this demo, I'm going to pick HD 720p. Next, we'll look at this setting, which allows us to use recorded timings and narrations or don't use recorded timings and narrations. Now, obviously, because we did go through the process of recording narrations and then we adjusted timings on slides and so on and so forth, we definitely want to make sure that this is what we pick, use recorded timings and narrations. And lastly, we have seconds spent on each slide. Now, that description there isn't very accurate. What this timing or value lets us control is it lets us control the duration of a slide that does not have any narrations or any other multimedia on that slide. So for example, if you recall, I left the very last slide with my contact details without any animations, without any narrations or multimedia files on that slide. So I can stipulate here the duration of those slides. So once again, this value is for stipulating the time for any slide that does not have a narration or any other multimedia on them. Once we've done all that, we can simply go ahead and click Create Video. That then opens up an Explorer window, so I'll simply create a new folder here and I'll call this PPT to Video. I'll simply open that up and I would recommend that you change the title of your PowerPoint so that you actually know that that's the video file. So I'll call this PPT, PPT to video, and you can always leave a date in there, which helps. And I'll simply click save. You will then observe that the progress bar is down here. 
This will of course be a long or short process depending on how large your PowerPoint is. So once the export has completed, I'll open up my Explorer, go to the particular folder that I know I saved the file to, and then I'll simply double click to play the video file. I'll just maximize the player and let's play this back. Understanding solar power. Hi, I'm Kevin and I'll be your teacher this semester. So if you have any queries, don't hesitate to get in touch with me. What is solar power? Let's explore this. Energy created by the heat and light of the sun is called solar energy. Now students, I'd like you to make note that it is energy created by the heat and light of the sun that is referred to or called solar energy. Let's move along. Solar power is produced when energy from the sun is converted into electricity or used to heat air, water or other substances. Lower your energy costs and help create a cleaner, healthier planet for generations to come. Connect to the sun and power up. Great, so that went well. There is one thing there though that I wish I would have changed and I'll show you what I mean. Understanding solar power. Now I'll just pause there before I start talking. What I would have liked to do is I would have liked to have this little uh, video window of myself up here in the center of the screen rather than just at the bottom there especially because this is you know pretty much a blank slide and I'll quickly show you how you can do that so I'll just minimize this go back to my original PowerPoint come to that particular slide and I can simply pick that video element there bring it to the center of the screen and resize it reposition it as I would like to and then do the export once again and that video would be in that new position. So there you go, that concludes the main area of the tutorials. You might also want to go through some of the other tutorials in the additional content section. Thanks for watching.